friends, welcome to another message from the Voice of Truth podcast. Today I want to talk to us a little about jealousy, how destructive it is. And I'm looking at jealousy as pertaining to leadership. When God called Saul, he called him because the people required a king. So Saul had the characteristics of the king that the people wanted. So God installed him as king through the prophet Samuel. But Saul was not a man after God's own heart. God needed somebody after his own heart. And that person was David. So when David came in the pit as a young man, Saul was very unhappy. He did not know that David was, would replace him. But he was angered by David's popularity. And why was David popular? David was popular because he trusted in the God of heaven. David was popular because when it was that Israel was running up and down like scared rabbits because of the Philistines and especially Goliath, the little boy David had confidence that God would deliver. And so he went to Saul amidst all the mockery and jeering. He went to Saul and he told him that he would fight Goliath. He was going to fight Goliath not by his own power and might. But because of the grace that God had bestowed upon him. And the faith that he had in God. Now when it was that because of desperation, they actually accepted David's proposal to fight Goliath. They tried to dress David in their own war gears. But David did not know anything about those. So David refused to use them. David knew about his sling and stone. So David took five stones and he took a sling. Why did he take five? Because Goliath had four brothers. So David took it and he went. When Goliath saw David, Goliath ridiculed him. And he asked if he was a dog that somebody should send this little boy against him. But David told him that I am going to be given your flesh. Because you come against me with a sword and a spear and a shield. But I am coming against you in the name of the Lord. So David knew that because he was coming in the name of the Lord, he would take off the head of a lion. And he said that the carcass of the host of the Philistines would be given to the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth may know there is a God in Israel. So David was going to give their flesh. All the living things that wanted something to eat that would have been available there. While it was that the Philistine himself had promised David to give his flesh unto the force of the air and to the beasts of the field. But the Philistine was not able to fulfill what he said because David said he was coming in the name of the Lord against him. 
That time Saul was somewhere cowering in fear. While David was standing up. A little boy yet a giant. Before another giant. And when he sent forth the stone from the sling. It went into the forehead of Goliath. And he fell to the ground. And David. Who had no sword in his hand. Ran and stood upon the Philistine Goliath. Stood upon the body of him. And took out his own sword. And took off his head. And then of course all the other Philistines ran. And there was rejoicing in the camp of Israel. And because of that. All the people of Israel. Began to lord and to cheer. <laughs> David. Saul didn't like it. Because they sang. Saul had slain his thousands. And David is ten thousands. Saul was wroth. He was angry. Because it's what they were saying displeased him. Because they said listen. They have ascribed unto David. Ten thousands. And to me they have ascribed but thousands. What can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. And this is from 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 8 and 9. Verses 8 and 9. And then when you look at it, because of Saul, heart began to become very bad. A familiar spirit began to dwell with him. The spirit of the Lord departed from him. Leaders, if you are not doing what God has called you to do, you have no right to be upset or displeased when another is doing what you should have been doing and they are getting the glory that you should have been getting. Leaders are called to lead from the front. Once it is that God has given you a mission. God will have given you the tool. To do the work properly. Sadly. Many who have assumed leadership. Were not given leadership by God. And that is why they are not able to lead properly. But we'll see that even with Saul was called because of the necessity placed by the people, by God. God put him in place because of the necessity that the people place. Even him failed in leadership. Leaders, you are not in place for status. You are not in there because of authority. You are there to be a servant to the people. You are there to protect and to guide and to lead and to do all that is ascribed to a leader. Don't be jealous of the other person or persons who see your lapse. Who God has used or is using to fill in the void that has been made empty because of you. If you see that somebody is doing better than you. You need to examine yourself. See where you are falling. See what it is that you have not been doing. And ask the Lord to help you. To repair that breach. Ask the Lord to help you. To do his will. You cannot stop. That which God has put in place. 
And if you are an indifference to what God has put in place, God will remove you so that what he wants to be done will be done. So, a message to all leaders. You lead from the front. And you do not. You do not leave the people to be scattered. Or else if you do so. God will send someone to gather them together. Just as how he sent David. Leaders don't know everything. Neither can a leader do everything. But a leader can do a good job. If the leader abides in the presence of God and is being led by God. Think about that. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for being the wonderful God that you are. We thank you for your keeping care and your tender mercies. I pray that every one of us who has been called to lead in one capacity or the other, will not seek to do so in our own strength and wisdom, but that will seek wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from you, that will seek to abide in your presence and to do your will, that will seek to lead according to your want it to be done. Help us that pride and arrogance will never take over, and help us to recognize our weaknesses, and to know that you'll be using other persons and that we should encourage them. That as leaders we should have in place succession planning. So that Lord when you choose to move us off from the play field. Then others will be there from whom you can choose. Help us to recognize and to know that no office that we hold is permanent. That we are just pilgrims and strangers passing through. Help us to do your will with a clean and pure mind. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. My friends, thanks again for sharing with us. And I ask that you share these messages. And I pray that your heart has been blessed. And I I'm encouraging you to subscribe if you have not yet done so. That you'll also touch the like button. And that you'll send this message to all the persons in your contact. So that we'll become good leaders according to the will of God. Abiding by the will of God. Doing what God wants us to do. And not what we choose to do. So that we'll avoid that demon that is called jealousy. God bless you until.